Hey friends, thanks for being here today. We are felting this little cluster houses 2D scene. We're gonna start with wet felting the background and I'll show you a couple of ways you can achieve that, including starting by needle felting it. And then we'll finish up with needle felting all the houses in the picture. So let's get started. Hi y'all, I'm Hannah. Hi, I'm Kayla. Hi, I'm Ann. Hi, I'm Marie, and we are coming to you live from the great state of Texas <laughs> because it's Happy Woolly Wednesday! <laughs> hey everyone, happy Wednesday and happy mid-February. It's pretty cold in some places, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting reports that it's cold everywhere. It was 32 here today, wasn't it? It's chilly. <laughs> this morning. For us, that's super cold. So if wherever you are, it's snowing. We're just blowing some sunshine your way. We have lots. And we have lots going on, too. What do you guys have happening? Um, right now, I'm getting a bunch of stuff prepped for designer packs. Mm, what, yeah. color, what color are you making? Oh, I'm actually doing three at once right now. <laughs> <laughs> Rockstar! <laughs> Yeah, I've been getting bunny kits, our signature bunny kits, ready oh, for yeah, this yeah. spring. Yeah. Yeah. So we have the bunnies of Hoppy Hollow. Yep. Yeah. And named that one. <laughs> well, and what about you, Ann? I've been moving stuff around in the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not a bad warehouse day when it's this cold, right? Yeah, yeah. it's pretty Come nice. Come August, that's different. But we are super excited. We have lots of friends coming this week, next week. Kate Kaprowski is going to be here. Yay. We're going to wet felt ruffle scarves and hats. But today we're going to do a little wet felting tutorial as part of a two-part series. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get started. Awesome. Y'all have fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being here, everyone, and happy Wooly Wednesday. If you are here for the first time, let us know that you're new and this is your first time. You will see we have friends joining us from all over the world saying hi and where they're from. And hey, we would love for you to do that too. Let us know where you're from. If you are watching the YouTube playback, be sure to comment as well and hit that subscribe button so you can see whenever we post a new video. And if you're watching us now on Facebook, if you look up to the top left of like the chat window, you might see a little bell. If you click that bell, you will get a notice when ever we're going live so that would be fun and we don't send out a messenger bot right now we might do that but let me see who's here I see Jenny in Alabama and Kathy in Michigan Michelle is in Florida Cindy is here from Nova Scotia Canada awesome Pat's in the UK thank you for being here everyone let me tell you what we're gonna do today we um, we are going to do part one of felting this little cluster houses tutorial. A number of people have asked me for this. Last week we did a basic intro to wet felting and we did a fine fiber and we did about an ounce of fiber. This project is about an ounce of fiber or less also and for our tutorial I'm going to blow it up a little bit bigger. I'm showing that I'm super blurry on Facebook. How about you, Anne? Is it blurry on your side? No, Anne says it's okay, so maybe it's just my computer. If you're having video issues at all during the live show, we do record this and we will post it to YouTube after, and that'll be a good capture. We use a different camera for it. Um, but for today, we are going to be working with some of our signature fibers, which include our core wool, um, and in this case, our core wool batting our PFX pre-felt and our MC1 bats. And I brought in a collection of colors here and actually I'm gonna have Anne talk you through those colors right now. Because everybody loves to hear from Anne, right? <laughs> Yay, Anne! <laughs> Bye, Anne. Fabulous, so these are the colors that Marie will be using for this tutorial. These are all our MC1 batting. I'm going to start right here. This is lemon peel, red grapefruit, cobalt, lemongrass, midnight, orange cream. Right here is berry, true violet, red indigo, charcoal, espresso bean, and black onyx. Mm -hmm. And then maybe the other. Oh, yes, yes, yes. 
Jalen says, yeah, Anne, you always do great. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Jalen. <laughs> Alrighty, and then these are three additional colors that will be used for the background. Right here is ocean green. This is grape. And right here is Caspian. <laughs> Lovely colors, beautiful colors, uh, hard, hearty eyes from Connie Wood. <laughs> oh, these are gorgeous together, right? <laughs> <laughs> Super fun. When she's, when she's in Palmer Lake. Thank you for being here, everybody. Now, we may not have every color in stock at the moment. We have been selling a whole bunch of fiber. So if a color is not currently in stock, just watch for it soon. We're in the middle of multiple production runs. But MC1, we're going to work with today. Some of you are very familiar with it, and some of you are brand new. I will tell you quickly that it is a living felt brand fiber, so you won't find it elsewhere, except some of our customers do tuck it into their kits that they sell on Etsy. It's about 25 micron, and it is a domestic fiber, which means it all comes from U.S. farms. We biowash it, which means we use a very earth-friendly soap that is highly biodegradable, and it doesn't get any chemical treatments. Um, so it's really nice and pure, but it is dyed in about like over 90 colors we have it now. And this is processed into a batting, which you'll see today. And the batting is just a really fun way to work with this fiber. So that's what we're going to work with. And Anne went through the colors. So just in a second here, we're going to turn down and look at how we get to where we got today. So we are going to needle felt the background a little bit and wet felt. And let's talk about that. So while we're up, I'll just hold this up. This is what we're going to get to. And you will have two weeks to complete your background. So hopefully you'll make multiple backgrounds because next week Kate Kaprowski is our guest. So we'll do more show and tells with her. And then the week after that, we'll get back to needle felting this picture and showing you how to finish it off. So you have a couple of weeks to make yours and get everything you want to make it. Pretty good and we'll try and zoom in uh, if we need to somewhere. This is the background we're going to make and the reason we're choosing this process is so that you can get like a multicolored background. Right now it might look a little stripey, but once you put your image on there, it won't. So your houses, if you do the cluster houses with me or whatever design you choose, will eat up a lot of this space and it won't look so stripy. So you might just think about how you play with that. And I didn't do a huge amount of mixing, but I'm gonna show you exactly how I got to where I am today with this. So let me put this off to the side. And before we jump to how to get here, um, I want to show you this is what I worked with. Uh, this You could work with our core wool, or you could also work with our PFX, which is a pre-felt. So PFX is a great fiber to use as a background or a base for a project when the cut edges don't matter. So that would be when you're doing something that will be flat. You wouldn't want to use it if you're wet felting over resist because you get these hard cut lines that are difficult to deal with. So if you're felting over a resist, use the core wool batting or some other fiber and not the PFX, which is a pre-felt. A pre-felt is essentially fiber that has been semi-felted. Very often nowadays that is done with a um, needle felting process. with a needle felting process. Let me see, maybe I can move my, I'm gonna make a little adjustment here, uh, y'all, because we just have too much table over here. So let me see if I can come this way a little bit. Is that okay? All right. So what you can see is that this has been compressed and this is about one, what do we say, it's 0.7, right? And this is about 0.7. This is what I started with for my picture because I'm gonna make it bigger, is about a nine inch square. It's nine, nine and a half inches. If you were to pull this off the core wool batting, this is how thick it would be. Does that show? Big, it's big and lofty. The only real difference is if you use a pre-felt, the felting's gonna go a little bit faster. 
if you use the batting, it'll take a little bit longer because we've got to get all these fibers closer together to get a nice felted fabric. For today, we're going to speed it up even a little bit more by needle felting it. And that'll speed up the wet felting portion of our process for today. Now, if you just, uh, some people ask us what our core wool is like felted, and this is an example. When we did an intro to wet felting, was it last week or two weeks ago? Two weeks ago now, I think we did an intro to wet felting, and I showed these samples of our core wool felted, so you absolutely can just wet felt our core wool. And in our intro, we wet felted this fine merino top. This is also a one ounce piece, but it's very, very thin and delicate. If you want, you can absolutely use different fibers for your background, like this thin merino top. It's just that you're not going to get the density that I'm going for in this picture. I wanted to have a thicker base layer um, and so that it has some dimension to it for the fiber to go into. Adding to that example, you could just needle felt your picture without a colored background using something like 100% wool felt. These are wool felt sheets that we sell in the shop. They are one millimeter thick. Um, you can't wet felt them. They would be if you only wanted to needle felt the design on top. They're thin, but they can hold a lot of wool. And the one thing I want to say that we notice is that if your background is very thin and your needle is very aggressive, you're more likely to dig into your, your foam pad underneath a lot. So a little thicker background will save your foam a little bit. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. And a couple of our felting friends are wanting to know what is, mic what is a micron count? Okay, micron count is the diameter of the actual fiber. So think of it as like the thickness of that, the individual fibers. And the lower the number, the smaller the shaft of that fiber is. And it tends to be finer, softer, softer next to your skin, and even felt faster. So we're going to start we're going to start by needle felting our our base layers. As I said, you could start with the core wool or you could start with the PFX. This is the PFX is our pre-felt. That will just dictate how long it takes to get the fiber compressed. So for today's demonstration, I'm going to go with the PFX so it goes a little bit faster. And Leah wants to know, so how thick would you recommend the background to be? Uh, this is, I would go with this. This is the thickness of our batting as it comes off the roll. And it's a couple of inches deep if you look at it next to my finger. So if you went for about a nine inch square and have it weigh 0 0.7, 0 0.8 tenths of an ounce, you would have the same density that I have. Yours can be thicker, yours can be lighter, but that's the density I have here in a nine inch square, is about 0 0.7, 0 0.8 tenths of an ounce. So hopefully that helps. And that's very little. It helps, you could use all of the MC1 as the background, but the core wool is less expensive and it's not gonna show, so it's nice to have it as the background. When you get this fiber, this is a two ounce roll. If you order six, it'll be bigger. If you order eight, it'll be bigger. But we sell it in a minimum of two ounces or you can get it in an assortment pack. When you open it, you just kind of unroll it and then you divide it in half like this. And it, you can see that there are a bunch of layers to it and it's kind of got its own thickness. So this one is actually kind of a thin bat and is actually really long. For the purpose of what we're doing today, we're gonna to use about this thickness, about half the thickness of our MC1 bats. All in all, in my big picture, I only use, in a picture this size, I only use a half ounce of the dyed wool on top. So it takes very little. 
These are my colors that I'm working with and Anne showed you those. And here's all I'm gonna do. The layout is so fast and easy. I'm gonna unroll my, this, these are my scrappy bats from home. This is about a half ounce and I want this to take up just a little more than half the picture on the top and I'm just going to put my hand here and tear off the excess that I don't want. I'm going to let mine extend over the edge a little bit because I want this sort of organic edge on my picture. You can also fold yours over and needle felt it flat. That's, you know, whatever you want to do, whatever subject, whatever colors you want to do. And Anne, you just interrupt me with pictures because you know I'll talk forever. This is the ocean green. And all you want is to not to be able to see the color underneath. If you can see the color underneath before you felt it, you will see the color underneath after you felt it. Sherry so I'm gonna asks, split. Uh, will the white background migrate to the top, it, making the colors hazy? It will a little bit, but let me hold up this felted sample. And I bet where you are, you won't be able to see it, but I will point out where you can. So I'm gonna hold it up right there. So it's a very short fiber, our core wool, and so um, the migration is not extreme. You could always put thicker layers on top if you don't want any halo. And I'm not sure if it'll show up on your screen there, but you can see, if you can see this little bit of a white edge right here, that's from the cut edge. So whenever there's a cut edge, it shows a little bit more. We showed some pre-felt samples a few weeks back and I showed how those edges migrate. But overall, this picture is made the exact same way and you really can't tell. Yeah, so it's not enough to be worried about. Okay, let's get this layout on here. So easy, so fast. You want your layers even and I'm not even alternating layers on this one. I've got my pre-felt is, uh, my pre-felt underneath has already just been punched how it comes. And um, yeah, there's not even any alternating of layers. I'm gonna make a little dark corner down here. So you're using right now the, the PFX is the white background. And do you have a preference for needle felting your background first or wet felting your background first? In this picture, I wanted to have a wet felted background to needle felt the design onto. You can wet felt it 100% or you could needle felt it to start and then wet felt it. I have done both on samples that I have here in the studio. The only difference is if you don't compress the piles that I'm giving you right now with needle felting first, the wet felting goes a little more slowly and should be a little more gradual um, in how you increase your pressure. If you needle felt it first, you can kind of increase your pressure a little more quickly. That's about it. And so here, what I'm gonna do, you can decide how you want your layers to uh, blend or overlap. This is all gonna be covered by houses, so I'm not too worried about it. But I do like it to be a little gentle and feathered wherever it's gonna blend. And then up here, I am going to blend the purple and the green. And I'm gonna just do that by hand. And ask away while I do this. I'm just gonna do a little hand blending right now. I'm going to layer two layers, uh, two layers together. I want it to be a little more green than purple. A couple of our felting friends want to know if this will be a kit. This is, we're not planning a kit for this. Um, so we, we do sell all the pieces and parts. So the PFX is at the mill right now, or you can just use our core wool and, um, so we have that available. We sell it in eight ounce bags. And then the MC1, you can get it in a goodie bag. You can get it in a, which is three ounces of 12 colors. You can get it in a studio pack, which is six ounces, uh, six colors, one ounce each, or you can buy it in two ounce increments. So we're not planning to make this particular picture a kit because goodness knows once you pick your colors, it's just gonna be amazing. A goodie bag might be great to do for something like this. A goodie bag would give you plenty of wool to make these houses. 
Okay, so I've been yammering on and I've just mixed this up. It's a little chunky because I'm doing it by hand, but you know what? It doesn't even matter. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. You can blend it with your hand cards, you can blend it on your drum carter, but if you don't have those, use your magic hands and just blend it till you're happy. I want it to be kind of chunky and funky, and I have this base layer under here so I can just kind of spread this out. You can, your design layer can kind of break rules at times, meaning like everything doesn't have to be just one way. So get your bait, your foundation layers all nice and however you want them, but let your, your design layer can be a little more free. You just want it to be kind of even. You don't want big holes, you know, gaps. And I think I will just go to like here because I want it to not be real stripey. I don't want it to be real uniform. I want this to come over a little bit and I'm gonna let this, this part down here come this way a little bit. I just need a little more dimension under here so that this matches this. Any questions, Anne? I guess a couple folks are just joining us and they're wondering if they could make this without using a pre-felt or formal underneath. Yes, you can. And you know, uh, just about a year ago, we did a very similar tutorial as we're doing today, but we didn't use the base layer. So you can use, you know, you can make your layers just as thick but not use the core wool, or you can make them thinner. And it's just going to just be a thinner substrate. I want mine a little bit thicker. I didn't get my four needle. Yeah, four needle metal. Okay, so we have our layers, uh, we, we have our layers all laid out. And what I'm gonna do is needle felt this down and I'll show you how we do it. We're gonna like just get started doing it. And I like to start like in a corner and work my way around. You'll see that it's sticking over the edges and I'm absolutely happy with that. We're gonna needle felt it first and then wet felt it. And I forgot my fancy needle tool. So Anne's grabbing me one. Thank you, Anne. Okay. I'm using the four needle metal tool that we sell in the shop. You can put any size needles in it you want. We sell it with 36 triangle needles and I often like to load mine at home with even 38 spirals or something like that. I'll usually start in one corner and work my way methodically across. Now look, you could just wet felt from here forward. And when we pick up this tutorial next time, I'm going to, oh, this one. This one was not needle felted at all. Not needle felted. This one was only wet felted. So doing just what we're doing now and wet felted. It took about an hour to get it as felted as I wanted. And if you do it this way, start by needle felting. If you're shy about wet felting, if you're new, or if maybe you have more time you know, for dry felting than you do for wet felting, then you can start it this way. You're not breaking any rules. <laughs> There's, you could also needle felt it 100%, but I would suggest that you needle felt it really, really well. This is just my first pass. And in the first pass, it's still gonna be pretty lumpy and loosey-goosey. So don't cut yourself short. If you wanna make good art with clean lines, real crisp outlines, then your background should be fully felted or compressed. Elise asks, what would happen if you went directly to wet felting after setting the colors down? This. This. The only difference is um, it just takes a little more time to compress with the soap and water and you go a little more gradual in the initial rubbing stages because the fibers are all loose. That's the only difference. But this piece was not needle felted and I can prove that by showing you the back. You can see the back doesn't have any needle punches whereas this one does. See those speckles show that this was needle felted and this one was not. So the only difference is it takes a little more time to wet felt 
And I was originally going to do that for today's demonstration, but because it took me an hour to get it as felted as I wanted, I knew that it was just going to take too long. So this is my four needle metal tool. It's wonderful. It's aggressive. It's not too big. It allows me to feel like I have a lot of control and I like how close those needles are together. Really nice for working your way across a piece. This is what I would do. I go across this entire piece at least once, maybe twice with my four needle tool. And then I am going to jump to my little cluster tool and you don't have to, but this is just me being a nerd. <laughs> this is how I like to nerd out. Uh, and especially because that part didn't take too long. And I'm going to go across the whole piece in the same methodical fashion and compress all of this down. So I'm going to get up real close here for a second and show you if I can. This whole half was needle felted with this little cluster needle tool after using the metal tool. And this part was not. Does it look on the screen a little more bumpy, a little more loose? This piece was not. You could still jump to the wet felting part, but you still need to be a little delicate when you do so that you don't um, just move too quickly and rough up those fibers. So this is a great thing to do. Building backgrounds like this is a great thing to do, maybe especially if you're feeling like not super creative or not ready for the detail. Maybe you just need a little craft meditation. <laughs> And you can create a few of these backgrounds and get them queued up for making whatever pictures come to your mind, whatever pictures you want. For this tutorial, we'll just make the cluster houses. So when I get to this point, is how I made this picture, we're going to wet felt. And we're going to get our wet felting station set up here, and we're going to jump right into that. Here is what I have for you. These are the basic tools, really very easy. We're going to start with a towel as the base layer. Any old towel will do, something you don't care about. I'm going to use our super bubble, uh, which is a very rigid bubble. This is not the packing bubble. This is a very uh, rigid bubble. We have some uh, hot water and our olive oil soap. And I'll explain that. This is our olive oil soap. We import it from France. It is a high vegetable content. It will last forever. Well, it'll last a long time if you just dry it out in between uses. We like it because it creates a nice slick surface for wet felting and will help your hands glide across the fibers. As well, it's going to help you um, guide all the fibers together. It's low sudsing, so it's not gonna create a bunch of air in the fibers. We're using our mesh. Some people like to use mesh. Oh, this is the wrong side. Some people like to use mesh and some people like to use um, bubble wrap instead of this. Some people like to use um, plastic, whatever you like to use. This is bigger than I need, but we'll go with it. And I'm only encouraging two layers of mesh for the initial flip. Um, if you're starting with your pieces all loose, everything is all loose especially, having two layers of mesh helps you get hold of your piece and flip it over without losing it. So I wonder if I need to, no, I think we're visually, are we okay, Anne? Do I need to move? We're okay, Anne says, okay. So this is what I have. I have a towel, I have our super bubble, I have two layers of mesh, I have our olive oil soap, I have our olive oil soap and I have a sponge. You might also like to wet out with a ball brass. I know I'm crooked. Okay, here's what we do. Closet. 
Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. The first thing we want to do is get the project wet with soap. When we do that, I've got a little bit of soap in my water. I just put my soap in the water as it's as I'm running the water. I run hot water from the tap. And then I load the soap onto my sponge. I'm gonna press it in the middle and press towards my way out. When we press water and soap in, we are pressing air out. Water and soap in, air out. So if you done any of our other wet felting with us and last week we did intro to wet felting you know I'm not blotting it all over the place I am really pressing that water and soap in what this does is bring all of the layers closer together The reason you don't want to use a super sudsing uh, soap like dish soap or something is because it adds air and causes the fibers to actually get further apart. So a soap like this acts a little more like glue. Now since we've needle felted, the fibers are already a little bit more close together. And if you start without needle felting, this part just takes a little bit longer. And you might see a little more spread when you initially add the water. I'm making these pieces to fit on a 12 by 12 uh, frame, which we'll do on the second video. We'll finish up. You do want your piece to be completely wet before you start rubbing. And we're actually gonna wet and soap both sides before we start rolling. So the first thing I like to do is work my hands across the entire piece and I'm really pressing that soap and water through. Depending on the fiber you're using, some fibers are just a little more resistant to holding, holding water um, and you might notice a dry patch. Add more soap if that's what you see. So after flattening it, the next thing I'm going to do is just lightly massage my hand is very, very flat. My palm is very flat. And we're just trying to form like a surface skin. Now, if your pieces, piece was not needle felted, be very light in your touch here. Be very light in your touch. This part is going to take longer if you did not needle felt. If you needle felt it a little bit, still take your time. If you needle felted it as much as me, you can actually use more pressure at this point. So it really depends on what you have going. Be sure to get the edges too, and notice that I like to go, like I'll go in circles across the whole thing in one direction, then I'll go in circles in another direction, and then I'll even go up and down. This rubbing part can just take a few minutes, or you could rub the whole thing until it's felted. Peel back your mesh routinely to make sure that you're not sticking to it. If your fibers are peeling on the mesh, then you're rubbing too hard for the stage you're at. You'll, you'll need to get the fibers closer together before you increase to that level of pressure. So if it's peeling or roughing up under your hands, then lighten your pressure. Valerie asks, would you ever press the soap directly on the wool? I usually don't. Like if I press it on the wool, it's going to kind of want to stick and this is, it's going to want to stick and rough it up. I use the mesh as a barrier. Some people prefer plastic. Some people will squirt soapy water all over and press either bubble wrap down or plastic down. I just like to feel my fiber with my bare hands even though this barrier is in there. Now the barrier is just to keep my hands from being too rough on the wool and from sticking to it. So now I've rubbed across the whole surface and I see another question popping up. What I'm gonna do while that question comes in is I'm gonna flip this over and add soap to the back. And that's how I flip. I just do that roll one more time. I like to flip towards myself. And when you have two layers of mesh, that makes it really easy. Okay, go ahead, Anne. At this stage, can fiber still be added? You could, yes, absolutely. You could add fiber now. Absolutely you can. So if you feel a bare spot, if you see some, if you see a bare spot, if you see somewhere you want to add color, now is a great time to do that. Now's the perfect time. And what I'm doing right here is just making sure that the back is equally as wet because this is kind of thick and also soapy. I want soap coming from both sides. 
and you'll kind of see it like some areas will just look wet and some areas you can tell are wet and soapy. Claire asks, I've been using tool that I bought at the craft store. It really slips around. Is it likely my technique or the, the tool itself? If the tool is slipping, you might try, you might try a different material because our tool doesn't slip. It doesn't slip around. So is it slipping around on your bubble underneath? If it is, you don't have to use it all the way, uh, you know, you don't have to use it for a long time in the process. There's some point where it's just kind of a hindrance on the bottom layer. So I would only use it on both layers in the beginning and then after a while you'll take it off the top also. So if it's slipping around down here, then you might just take it off the bottom layer, especially once you've treated both sides. Now what we're gonna do, I've rubbed it a little bit. Most of our compression has come from the needle felting. So we're actually gonna roll. When we felt, what we're trying to do, when we make felt with your bare hands, what we're doing is taking, in this case, 100% wool fibers and turning them into a new fabric. We do that by first reaching a soft felt stage. A soft felt stage is when you can kind of pinch the fibers. They tint together and they don't pull apart. We're not there. Even though I needle felt at that, this is all wet, this is so sloppy that I could tear it apart with my hands if I wanted to. So we need to continue agitation, which is part of the felting process, and get those fibers to bind together. And so we're going to roll now. Ask me anything, Anne. Uh, Linda says, it looks like the olive oil soap is not very foamy, does that help help it felt quicker? Absolutely. As it, so we, we mentioned that just a little bit in the beginning and that is that if your foam, I, if your soap, I said sudsy, so same idea. If your soap is very sudsy, it will add, those bubbles add air. So because this is low sudsing, it's not adding any air. Instead, it's got a lot of oil in it and it keeps the fibers close together. When you first roll, the first time you roll a project, especially when it's thicker, a lot of water comes out. So let that water come out. I'm just gonna let my mesh get all wadded up in here. I'm not gonna roll it too tightly. We'll roll tighter as the fibers get closer together. Part of bringing those fibers closer together is to get some of this water out. We don't need it all to stay in there. So as soon as you roll, just let your project drain into your bucket. I'm not squeezing it out. I'm not trying to make it dry. I'm just getting that real sloppy stuff out. And now I'll keep rolling. I'm gonna roll my project up and I'm going to rock and roll. Some of y'all have seen me do this. I'm gonna rock and roll 25 times and then give it a quarter turn on its axis. So this is how I do it. 10. 20, 25. I give it a quarter turn and keep going. I'm gonna do this a hundred times. So ask me a question. <laughs> uh, Jill asks, she says, when you did the intro to wet felting, you talked about different size rolling tools for different situations. Can you explain that again? Um, yes. So I would say when, let me see, how can I say? So we, we kind of use the example of different types of knives. Let me just pause for a second. The reason I paused, I only rolled like uh, 50 times, is because my roll got loose. So if your roll gets loose or sloppy, then re-roll so you have it really nice and tight. It should always be round, not flat, not warbling. So, I'm just using a closet pole right now because I want like a nice hard core. If you're using doing something a little more delicate like a nano felt, you might use a pool noodle. It's spongier. Or if you have something that has a lot of girth, you might start with a pool noodle so that you have that girth to wrap around if you have something really big or really thick. Um, and if you get to something that you're really trying to hard felt, then you can choose tools that are more aggressive. So your hands are your first tools. Those are your first ones. And if you educate yourself by felting with your hands, then you can start to build up your tool collection and add different tools for different processes. 
and I compared them last time to different knives in your kitchen. You know, a pool noodle is like a butter knife. This is a little more like a, I don't know, like a basic, maybe a basic steak knife because it's a little more aggressive. And um, some of the really rigid wooden tools are a little more like a, you know, like a vegetable knife or a meat cleaver. Okay, notice I'm not sticking to my project. The way we roll, just like the way we lay, uh, the way we roll, the way we rub, contributes to how something shrinks. So we want to always treat all edges evenly. So I'm gonna give this a quarter turn clockwise and just keep going the same direction, a quarter turn clockwise. Now we won't have time to get super, super far on this, but this is, I'm gonna show you what you're, what you're looking for and we'll look at a finished piece too. So you're gonna continue your rolls. You have another question, Anne? And a couple of our helping friends want to know how much pressure should you use when you roll? That's a great question. So it's gonna depend on the stage of your project. So whatever you're doing, start light, start without much pressure. Mostly just think of the rolling and as you go on, what you're gonna notice is that the fiber feels more compressed than when you started. As the fiber feels more compressed, you can add pressure. You can even switch out tools from a pool noodle, if something was big and thick, to your more aggressive tools as it gets more compressed. So let your hands learn as you work. And as the fiber gets, as the fiber starts to really form a fabric, that's when I increase my pressure. And you'll notice that you roll your rolls, your rolls up more tightly each time. And that's part of that pressure also, is how tight your rolls are. So, I'm ha I have a hard time counting and talking, but, <laughs> but that's okay, I'll feel how this goes. And we're gonna give this a quarter turn. So, on your piece, what I'm gonna have you do if you needle felt it as much as I did, you can roll it a hundred times on this side and then turn it over and do the same. And then give it a little pinch test and see how well that fabric is holding together. See how mine would still kind of come apart. This needs a lot of work. So what we'll do after rolling is we'll get to palming. So palming and more rubbing with your hands. So I want to invite you to watch back uh, our intro to wet felting video as well. Brush up on that and we're gonna cover some more topics in that as well. So roll 100 times on each side and feel how felted it is with your hands and your palming, your palming action and your rubbing action. And when you think it's done, that's time to rinse it and set it overnight because how it looks the next morning is going to be the telltale. What do we have then? If you're wanting to incorporate some locks or embellishment fibers into the background, could you still add them at this point? You could, but I would have added locks. I would add locks and embellishment fibers before you start rolling because you stand a chance of them not sticking. So the chance to, the time to do that is in the layout. Ideally, that's the design. If you're just going to wet felt them in, that's in the design layer. If you really wanna make sure they stick. Okay, so I'm not gonna bore you guys with another half hour of rolling because that's at least what it would take. And then we'll get to the palming and we'll get to palming and rubbing. So if you're brand, brand new to wet felting, please see our wet felting tutorials on YouTube. There is one called Intro to Wet Felting. We just did it last week. Um, we made this little simple piece right here. It's a different fiber, but it doesn't matter. The wet felting process is going to be the same method of attack, and that lesson was called the pancake lesson, and the idea was to felt something to a degree that you could cut it. So let's look at what to do after you finish wet felting. This is a piece, this piece, like I said, is 100% wet felted. And I just wanna get you ready to put a couple of backgrounds together for when we come back together in two weeks. So I'm gonna roll this up and finish it 
tonight, probably. <laughs> and a couple of our Hilton friends want to know, um, can you let these dry and then, and then come back to it the next day? Yes, if you, so what we'll have you do is felt it till you think it's done and then rinse all the soap and water out. Then just put this in a shallow pan or sink with just a splash of vinegar. And the reason you want to put it in with the vinegar is to help break down the soap and get the fiber back to its natural pH. It naturally tends to be a little acidic where soap tends to be a little basic. The more basic the fiber is, the more brittle it is. And it also kind of dulls its natural sheen if you're working with a fiber that has more sheen. So I'm going to turn on my iron here. What I want you to do is let it dry overnight. If it seems like it's not finished when it's dry the next day, is go back and felt it again. Just make sure you wet it all the way through and you heat it up and felt it some more. But really increase your pressure and increase your agitation so that you you know work that fiber. The coarser your fiber is, it's going to take a little more effort. The finer it is, the faster it'll go. But we're not necessarily going for fine on this project. I want something that's going to look great with my needle felting and these were the colors and the fiber that I wanted to work with. All the same fibers basically in the design. So once you're all done, we're going to iron. We're going to iron our project and I just use my iron on the hot setting. You can use it for the wool setting or the cotton setting and I'm going to put it on steam. I uh, didn't put any water in my let me just grab some water real quick. Sorry, Ann. Yeah, uh, just something I can pour with. I don't know what I would do without Ann, y'all. <laughs> this is the pea. And uh, somebody did want to know, they mentioned they heard vinegar rinse, and what's the proper proportion of vinegar to water? Oh, you know, some people say just to put in a couple of teaspoons of vinegar. Me, I just do a splash. I don't like to waste the vinegar, and really just a splash is all you need. Rinse all the soap and water out, and then soak it for about 15 minutes. Then I usually spin it out. I have a spin dryer. Spin it out in your washing machine, or you can just roll it in a towel and lay it dry flat. Thank you, Anne. Okay, so we're gonna steam press these because I just wanna show you, yes, you can just press right onto your fiber. And what I want is a nice smooth finish for needle felting onto. Okay, doing good? This is the one I did last week and since it's the, like a little the most bumpy, then I'll just go ahead and do this one. And fiber responds really well to being steam pressed and we just get all those lumps and bumps out. Now, if you're working on something and you want it to be a little more square, now's a great time that you could tug and kind of adjust where things go. This would be considered blocking. You know, blocking, we do blocking when we felt, just like maybe when you weave or knit or crochet. So you can steam press the entire piece and make it nice and smooth. And we're also going to steam press it after we needle felt because man, that can help give such a nice finish as long as you have really needle felted it flat. So let's do this one. This one is the one that was 100% uh, wet felted. And if you're not comfortable, you know, just, you can put a cloth over the top, but the fiber is not going to burn. That's the thing about wool is it doesn't burn. You can iron both sides if you want to. If you feel like you've got a, a lumpy bed. And iron it nice and smooth so that it's ready for your wet felting. Okay. There we go. We have a background made. This one uh, I can work on too. We kind of went from loose fibers to this loosely needle felted to something that is ready for your design. And if you needle felt it and then wet felt it, um, it'll go just the wet felting part will just go a little more quickly. And you can certainly touch up these colors if you want. Someone Questions? Asks, um, someone else, do you ever worry about any of the embellishment fibers being ironed? Well, um, yes. So like I didn't have embellishment fibers on this. If you have silks and stuff, you don't want to burn them. 
So you're not supposed to get those over like 190 degrees or whatever. We're gonna go ahead and turn up the cameras. Um, so definitely be cautious if you have your embellishment fibers. And is that one zoomed out? If you iron over something with texture, you're gonna smush it. But I wanna tell you that sometimes that's fun. I was at a guild meeting and we were making little greeting cards many years ago. And I needle felted just a little house on a hill scene. And um, in that scene, I had locks and textures and lumps and bumps. But then we had to adhere that via fusible web to a uh, postcard type thing. And I ironed over it and it smushed out the design and I loved it just as much. So if you do have dimension, if you put the iron on it, it's going to smush it. So I wouldn't, this is just this, what I'm showing you right now is just for backgrounds that you're wet felting or needle felting, wet felting, prepping them for design to be added later. So I wouldn't smush over something that I spend a bunch of time needle felting if I wouldn't iron over something I spent a bunch of time needle felting unless I planned to smush it. <laughs> I hope that answers the question. Okay, cool. And, and a lot of people are really curious about the felt books in the back. Oh, 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 oh. Well, you know what? We're going to give away some prizes, and I want to tell you about these books. So I brought these books to give away um, because these are two of the first books I ever had on felting. I think that I'm going to see when the published dates are. I think this one is called New Directions uh, for Felt in Ancient Craft. And um, I don't even know how to say the name properly. Guna, Gunilla Soberg. And it was actually translated by Pat Spark, who to me is an icon in the United States for really being a steward to the felt making process. When I first started felting, I learned about something called the Felt Maker's Digest, which is pretty much gone by the wayside now. And Pat Spark used to still do a newsletter about felt making, a print newsletter. I have original copies. And I got to meet her uh, several years ago uh, when I was in Taos at the Wolf Fest. But this book was published originally um, by Interweave in 2006. I'm looking for it, can't find it. 1996. 1996 and this one is called felt making wool magic it's by jory johnson and i think this one might be 2006. when i first started felting we didn't have this uh great thing that we do now in the internet there was a little bit of internet mostly on yahoo <laughs> and emails and a lot of print and i mostly learned to felt from books like these and other people who wrote written instructions with hand drawings uh, 2006 by Jory Johnson. These to me are two of my most prized possessions. So I'm not actually giving you mine. I <laughs> I bought these to give away because I want I want to really encourage you to buy books on felting even if they're old and really just absorb the resource that's out there. These are two of the best books on felting and I want somebody to have them. So we're gonna give away five prizes today. Usually we do three. We're gonna give away <laughs> and come tell what the other prizes are. And these are gonna be the two bonus prizes that we're gonna give away after. So we don't sell these y'all. You're gonna have to buy them on Amazon. We just bought them because we love you. And that's just the straight dope. Okay, the fairies are back, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so our three prizes today will be the fiber needed to to make the background. Essentially, you're going to get some core wool and then your choice of two colors of our MC1 batting. Yep. So we're going to we're going to draw three names right now to win. Yeah, what Anne said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all draw. Kayla. <laughs> Read it loud and proud. Margie Beach. Yay, Margie! Okay, Margie, is it, you're not in our database, anyone, email customer service at livingfelt.com or call us at 877-665-5790. And you can pick out the colors that you want. So we're gonna draw two more names for this prize. I'm gonna heart, 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 heart. And okay, the next winner is Jenny Tanner Jordan. Yay! 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 I think I said hi to her in the beginning. Remember? Oh, yeah. yeah. I forget where she's from, but <laughs> out there somewhere. Okay, one more. You got it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Claudia Lemke. Yay! Yay, Claudia! Congratulations, ladies. Okay, so these all win the fiber prize. Now let's give away the books. Let's pick one first. So give me the Joy Johnson book first. Okay, so <laughs> now we're gonna give away the Felt Making Wool Magic by Joy Johnson. Kayla, gonna oh, go again? Sure. All right, Linda Hughes. Yay, Linda! Congratulations, we'll send that to you. And last one. Okay. Give me the book. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the last winner is Susan Bell. Yay, Susan! <laughs> Congratulations everyone and thanks for hanging out with us. This is a quick and easy tutorial for what I promise is a quick and easy project. We want to get you wet felting. We want you to experiment a little bit and just see how easy it is to succeed. So you have two weeks to make your backgrounds. Next week, Kate Taprowski is going to be here and we will finish this tutorial on needle felting the houses then. So you have lots of time to get started. That's it. <laughs> have a great Thank week. You. Yeah. Happy yeah. Valentine's Day. Thank you. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Spend the time to felt your backgrounds. We will pick up this series uh, two weeks from the initial recording date and finish with needle felting our houses. We've listed all the supplies below. We hope you get started on yours and join us in our Facebook group, fb.com groups slash groups slash living felt friends. We'll see you there.